back TCS viewers to Confederation Park. Today we're looking at the brand new Sigma DP2, the Quattro. Very exciting camera. Of course, if you've seen our other video on the Merrill, it is a very unique camera. And of course, this is carrying on that tradition. So we're going to talk about its features, see if the image quality is really improved. And is this camera still such a pain in the butt to use? Come with me. We're going to try it out. Now, the Sigma cameras are very interesting, uh, not always in a good way. The first series of mirrorless Sigma cameras were absolute garbage. So when we decided to look at the Merrill, the second series, I was skeptical on it. And you know, it had a lot of negative things. Couldn't shoot above 200 ISO without it looking horrible. Focusing was terrible. Battery life was pathetic, like 70 shots if you were lucky. But it took beautiful, beautiful photos when you kept it in those very tight parameters. Now we've got the DP2 Quattro with a brand new sensor. What this is promising is to expand some of those negative parameters a little bit wider. Give us a camera which delivers amazing image quality, but in more usable situations. So we're going to try that out. Maybe we can pull off higher ISOs here. Maybe the camera is going to focus a little bit quicker. I'm eager to find out. Now the Sigma Quattro has a really nice improvement from the Merrill series. From 70 photos for battery, we're up to almost 200 photos per battery. Now, I mean, this is a big deal. I know compared to other cameras in the market, it's still crap, but it's a huge improvement. And this is also really good. When you bought a Merrill, they gave you two batteries. We assume that they would take that away now the battery life's better. But buy your Quattro and you still get two batteries. Now, one of the things they had to do to get those batteries to work is make a bigger grip. We're going to talk about that next. Now, of course, the big thing that everybody's talking about on the Quattro is its innovative design. You either love it or hate it. And I got to admit, when I first saw it on the internet, I thought this was a very cool, very modern, very dynamic looking camera. It's attractive. It's handsome. It's got a very, very cool look to it. And then I got my hands on it. Holding this Quattro in my hand is like gripping onto a sea urchin tightly. It's absolutely horrible. When I grab it here, my fingers have nowhere to really go. My pinky's rubbing up against a sharp edge. My thumb is pushing the focusing button or it's uncomfortably behind this notch. It's just the most poorly designed, uncomfortable grip I've ever held. It's actually quite comfortable like this, but this doesn't do us any good. And uh, it makes the camera large and bulky. Now I know that's to hold the battery, but compared to an original Merrill, this thing, it will not fit in any bag. I don't see any bag shaped like this. All right, it's absolute garbage. Here's the other thing. Other people have said, oh, Chris, it's not so bad. You're gonna hold it in your left hand by the lens. Now that does make a bit more sense. However, I've got my quick release plate on here and you need one of these. This camera needs a tripod. It doesn't shoot sharp handheld. There's no shake reduction, no image state stabilization and the shutter's got a good thwack to it and remember we don't have unlimited ISO choices like we'd have on other kinds of cameras so I don't know guys I mean leave it on a tripod then all you have to do is touch this and this and that makes a lot more sense otherwise I don't know prepare for arthritis I guess and tendonitis this camera is going to destroy your hand now, when it comes to lenses on Sigma cameras, if you want to have different focal lengths, you are buying more cameras. These are going to basically come with the 28, the 50, and the 75 mil equivalents. All 2.8 lenses and all stunningly good optically. There's no complaints there. The only thing I'm really disappointed in, close focusing capability. I'm in about, I don't know, 50 centimeters. It's my minimum distance here. I really like detail shots. I really like macro. You'll know that if you watch my videos on a regular basis. And this is about the closest I can get. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but again, it hurts these cameras as a versatile tool. At the heart of the Quattro is a brand new sensor, still made by Foveon with that three layer color technology, but they've done something interesting. They've actually scaled back the resolution on two of those layers. Now this does mean we might lose some detail. I'd say this camera is more equivalent to a 20 megapixel camera than what the Sigma DP Merrells used to be, which are more like a 24 to 30 megapixel equivalency. It's still a lot of detail. You can blow these up really, really big, but it should give us a big benefit, higher ISO performance, and we sorely need that 
on these cameras. The Merrill was disappointing. This camera should do better. The other cool thing it's going to do is make it easier on the processor. It has less to work on and that should hopefully enhance the speed on this camera. Again, something that the Merrill really needed help with. So here's something thoughtful. We've got our quick menu here. And again, very simple, very easy to see, and very easy to navigate. When I turn dials, they make sense. So I like that. There's not a lot in this menu, but that's okay. I mean, the Sigma Quattro is such a quirky camera. This is all I'm ever gonna use. We don't need a lot of features. It's a very simple, very, very basic setup. I'm gonna go in RAW all the time, maybe change my ISO, and change some of my other controls. That's it, so it works well. All right, so time for some really good news about the Quattro. This minor drop in resolution on the new sensor has given us huge payoffs in high ISO performance, big gains. We can now easily shoot 800 and 1600 ISO. Now as you look at these, when we get up to 3200 and 6400, lots of false color starts to look pretty stupid. Still, you gotta remember that the Merrill could only go to 200 max. The other thing I was really impressed by, long exposures are handled really well. We can go multiple seconds and the camera cleans it up really nice, again, as long as we keep within a good range here. So a huge Huge, huge improvement on the Quattro. Keep in mind though, compared to the rest of the industry, this is still bullshit. All right, so we got this beautiful magic hour light and this brings us to dynamic range. We got a ton of contrast here. I'm gonna shoot it. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying, I don't care what people say, the Sigmas, although very, very good image quality, very, very good detail, don't have the best dynamic range on the market. We have some issues. Let's take a look here. The Quattro is definitely doing something different from the Merrill cameras and from a lot of other cameras on the market. Uh, it doesn't handle highlights well. Maybe that's because of the new sensor, but really you lose a lot of detail and get weird effects. It seems to fill in blown highlights with just color and it looks gross. Check out some of the photos here that we took earlier. It's, uh, it's rough and so that leads me to something you gotta do on these cameras. You gotta shoot dark. I'm taking this shot right now at minus one and two thirds stops just to get those highlights under control. Now, interesting enough, in order to counter that, this new sensor, you can really push the shadows a lot more than you were able to. So we're gonna shoot dark, boost up the shadows, and surprisingly get very little noise doing that. But you gotta keep an eye on that. Highlights, watch out for them. Let's mention another good point on this very quirky camera. The burst rate's improved. You get almost three frames per second for about seven pictures. Now that's not bad for 2008, but we're gonna take it because it's a big improvement over the old series. One thing though, again, these are big files. They need a lot of processing. After you take those shots, remember you can be waiting quite a long time before you can do anything with the camera. I know it's a Sigma and I've used them before, so I'm not too disappointed, but a first time user might be. I take a picture, you can hear it here. There it goes. Now, I see a preview, but I want to hit playback and look at it carefully. I'm still waiting. There we go. So, still a big delay. The camera's faster than it was, but it's still not anywhere close to fast. You're going to have to be patient using this camera. You're going to be waiting a lot for getting another shot, previewing things, zooming in. All takes a little bit of time. All right, now of course, not surprisingly, the Quattro does not have the fastest autofocus among mirrorless cameras, not even close, but it does have a nice handy control on the back here and it is faster than the other Sigmas. I've got a one touch manual focus right with this controller and if I push down on it, I can choose my autofocusing points. You're only gonna get nine, unfortunately, and they're really located just in the central position of the frame. We can't move them out beyond that. That's unfortunate. I do like though that I can turn a dial and change the size of the focusing point. And that's very important because I find even on the medium focusing point, if I put it on a twig or a branch, something thin, it doesn't focus on it. It focuses on what is behind it. So I've got to go here to my smallest size, set it up, and then at least it'll focus where I want it to. All right, so it's time to talk about something that I actually do like about the Sigma, and that's the manual focus. We've already talked about how I enjoy this one-touch focus, push it, and it kicks into manual focus. But there's another really smart feature. Touch the shutter halfway and then turn the manual focus dial, and it does automatic punch and focusing. It makes a lot of sense. It's quick. It's easy. I really do like that touch. All right, so it's time to wrap up for today. What we're going to do is head to the classroom tomorrow, and we're going to do some prints, and there's a good reason for that. When we looked at the Merrill in our earlier video, the photos on the back of the screen looked like absolute garbage, but then we got them to the classroom, we printed them out, and we were amazed. So we're gonna do the same thing for the Quattro. Now, to be honest, the screen on here is much better, 920,000 pixels, but the JPEGs are absolutely useless out of this thing. So we're gonna get some prints on it, see what it looks like. I'm hoping to be pleasantly surprised. We'll see you guys tomorrow.
All right, so it's day two and we're back here ready to process our files. Uh, you know, Sigma software is notoriously slow and clunky and unfortunately, even though this is Sigma Photo Pro version six, their latest, it is still about as sophisticated and streamlined as your average shipping container. But we have to get these files processed into JPEG to print them out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that started. And uh, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but I'm gonna make you guys wait with me here. Okay, here we go into JPEG conversion. We're gonna save this as maximum quality. And are you guys ready? I'm gonna click now. Now don't let this early jump on the progress bar fool you. We have quite the wait. Uh, I should mention that we are using a very modern iMac. We're only doing one picture here. So yeah, if you get, uh, if you get shooting crazy and take a lot of photos, prepare to spend an afternoon in front of the computer. I think I'm going to, uh, I think I'm gonna make shrimp tonight. Maybe go for a bike ride. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cook up some shrimp, maybe flambe it with Sambuca or something like that. Everybody's got a good cocktail sauce recipe. Let me know. You can put that in the comments below. Hey, two thirds. Jordan got his hair cut. Looks nice. I think we're at about a minute right now. Uh, the progress bar seems to, oh, oh, it's all okay. It's, it's teasing us right at the end. It's teasing us. Not only have the Sigma designers made a very slow software, but it's also um, quite rude. Oh, hey, there we go. Okay. So there now we have our JPEG and uh, we can now do some stuff with it. So that wasn't so bad. Hey, I mean, I don't mind doing that 60 or 70 more times today. Uh, all right, so we're gonna take this opportunity to just look at the high ISO performance on the old Merrill and the new Quattro. Keep in mind we're using the 28 mil lens on the Merrill, it's all we could get a hold of, so we're kind of framing it up in a similar way. Still, the old Merrill files above 200 ISO used to be absolutely unusable. I am seeing a lot of false color. We've got a lot of green, a lot of purple. It's not great, but it's way better than it used to be, and I think that's because of the new software. So that's a nice side benefit if you guys have the older cameras. The Quattro, though, way better. We're getting superior high ISO performance, and that's a really nice thing to see. So that definitely makes it worth it, in my opinion. Uh, we can't really see too much about resolution here, so let's go ahead and print off some photos, take a look at these new files, and see if we're getting a better improvement in resolution with the new camera as well. All right, so we got another print on the way here, but taking a look at the res test, I'm gonna go ahead and say that both cameras are still upholding that tradition of oodles of detail with these Sigma cameras, and that's great to see. They do literally compete with modern full frame and even medium format cameras. They are really that good. Looking at the two here, color accuracy and stuff aside, I guess if I had to make conclusions, I'd say the original Merrill is still a hair, but just a hair sharper with more detail. That makes sense because of the higher resolution chip. But the Quattro, I'd say, gives us a more pleasing image overall. It's got a nice look, a nice color accuracy to it, and it's incredibly sharp. So really very close. You guys are gonna get either way a camera that's capable of stunningly good prints. All right, so here's final conclusions on the Sigma Quattro. It's gonna be bittersweet, of course, but I do like a lot of the improvements made here. You know, the key thing is this, Sigma always had great image quality. What they needed was a camera that was more practical to use, and they have definitely done that here with flying colors. Better battery life, higher ISO ranges, you know, overall a nicer menu system, and just a, a more streamlined camera have really helped make this camera more fun and enjoyable to use. Now, on the bad side, the ergonomics, I mean, the camera's handsome, I like the look of it, but it's just not comfortable to hold. It's just terrible. And you still need the camera on a tripod for the most part. You're not gonna be getting quick grab shots or street photography with this camera. So it is still pigeonholed into a very specific arena of shooting. But most importantly, what Sigma's maintained is that glorious image quality. And that's a big thing. You know, we're not improving in any way, but we're not really losing anything either. And that's good because that was the one thing the camera did not need improving on. I would also say that the Quattro tends to have a little bit of a nicer look to the photos overall, just a bit more refined look. And you gotta remember, this still represents excellent value for the money. 
So if you're looking for a Sigma camera, that classic quality, but you want something more practical and usable, this is the way to go. And because of that, we're gonna call the Quattro success. Thanks very much for joining us, guys. We will see you soon.